Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, Magnetic Reversal News, Sacred Geography, and Shinrin Yoku, bringing you a grand solar minimum update Friday, March 24th, around 3 p.m. Mountain Time, 2023. A very strong G4 geomagnetic storm was kicked off overnight, and the auroras were spectacular. The only problem is not a lot of infrastructure was affected, and we'll get to the full analysis in just a moment. But the big story... Severe storm threat, significant in the Mississippi River Valley. Keep calm, it's boom time. Severe weather outbreak forecast to threaten the Mississippi Valley and the Plains while the south and the southeast are above normal. It's going to be chilly in the west and more snow is on the docket. Here is the severe weather threat in the south. You're looking from San Angelo to St. Louis. That front is going to move through, and that's the Mississippi River Valley today, and this storm threat will be moving east. Full forecast is coming up in a moment, but the temperature outlook moving forward for the next week or so, it's very likely going to be warmer in the southeast and very likely to be colder in the northwest. And we did have a geomagnetic storm, and that means northern lights may be seen as far south as NoCal. We had pictures. I saw them last night when I went out and looked north, but the severe disturbance was due to the interplanetary magnetic field and not so much from the plasma wind itself. And we'll get to the full analysis when space weather comes up in just a moment. But there were some dazzling photos that showed aurora across the U.S. This is the Mackinac Bridge. I wonder why we can't blow this up. Let's try to do that. There it is. There's a shot from the Mackinac Bridge. Take a look at that in Michigan early Friday morning. Here is uh, some aurora spotted in Utah, and we had red aurora here. Some more Utah aurora. This is from Spokane, Washington. And this is from Phoenix. Wow. So, Aurora pushing very far south. And that's good news if you like northern lights. They dazzled a huge swath of the continental U.S. overnight. And we'll leave you links to all of the photos. Here's a video from Western Massachusetts. Western Mass this morning, the northern lights were visible. These photos were sent to us by Owen Darling out in Greenfield. Meteorologist Zach Green joins us now. Zach, not something you can normally see here. Look how brilliant that is. Yeah, and actually it wasn't Greenfield, not the only location. Amherst was one of them. And in fact, we saw this site as far south as New York City, even Washington, D.C. We are in a very strong, even severe geomagnetic storm. That doesn't mean we have any impacts here locally. This is more of a celestial event. But what is that concern? But it could have impacts locally, just not this storm. And we'll get to the full forecast in just a moment, so stay tuned. There is record snowpack and nearly full reservoirs, and that is good news. You can see the drought reduction from December 6th through March 21st. All of that exceptional drought is completely gone. All of the extreme drought has been eliminated. And now the Central Valley is filling with water at Tulare. Yes, Lake Tulare has come back from the grave. And the snowpack is going to be melting well into the summer. And that means flooding in the spring. Ding, ding. But we're not out of the woods yet. It's still winter. Massive slide with snow the other day. Covered Highway 89 around Emerald Bay. And that, uh, well, cut some people off. As Mammoth Mountain, California, extends its ski season into at least July. And that means summer skiing at Mammoth. Now there are chances increasing for big snow early next week at Lake Tahoe, three to four feet potentially. And the forecast, severe thunderstorm outbreak and risks of flooding today into tonight. An outbreak of severe thunderstorms is expected from the lower Mississippi Valley towards the lower Ohio Valley this afternoon and evening. Tornadoes, strong to potentially intense, as well as damaging winds and hail are expected. Heavy to excessive rain from trailing thunderstorms in this area may lead to flooding. So heads up, there's flash flood warnings and watches here out in Arkansas and in Oklahoma specifically on this, uh, the border between the two states. So click on your county for more info. Winter storm watches and warnings up in the Pacific Northwest, freeze warnings in the Cascades as well as the Sierras. And there are winter storm watches and warnings up for Utah, Montana, Wyoming, and Idaho. Say it ain't so. But it is. 
Let's take a look at that severe weather threat. And there it is right now, and it's going to be moving east through tonight and exploding. Wow, that was quick. Let's try to slow that down for you. Boom, boom, boom. So here it is through Friday, through Saturday morning. And by Saturday morning, a heavy band of snow is going to be moving up there through what appears to be Michigan and Wisconsin as that system bombs out in Canada. So heads up. Let's take a look at the snowfall totals. There's that bombing system in just the next few hours. It's going to bring a heavy swath of snow, 16 inches potentially there to northern Illinois. Take a look at that. Southern Wisconsin and Michigan. And then here we are Sunday, Monday. Heavy, that's heavy snow in the Cascades this weekend, but this is the early week system here. Starting on Monday and Tuesday, that's your lose day in the Cascades, or I mean in the northern Sierras. That is the system that's going to be moving in to potentially bring another three feet of snow to Tahoe Tuesday and Wednesday. We'll just move the models through here. Not much snow happening in the near future. But the Northeast is going to get a hell, he heavy dump before the first week of April, and the West continues to get buried. Seismic update, all is quiet on the, around the world, and that's because the coronal hole has now passed us and is no longer affecting us. There are no pressing issues with worldwide volcanoes either. Now on to the geomagnetic storm that we just experienced. Here you can see it was long-lasting, at least 18, 24 hours in geomagnetic storm, 12 of them in G4. Wow, nine of them right there, above KP7. And a lot of people didn't see this coming, but the severe G4 geomagnetic storm threshold was touched early in the morning, just after midnight, and was responsible for an aurora wonderland for many sky viewers. The aurora watch has since calmed down and fizzled out, as the geomagnetic activity is calming. Now, the reason for this huge outbreak has a lot to do with the seasons and the seasonal distribution of geomagnetic disturbances. Now, geomagnetic disturbances are not equally likely in every month of the year. The graph below illustrates this fact for geomagnetic disturbances where the daily planetary AP index exceeds a value of 25. And the data in the graph comes from the years 1932 to 2014. And geomagnetic disturbances tend to occur most frequent, frequently in the equinox months of March and April and September and October. They are least common during solstice months. Um, so for disturbances of this size, there are approximately twice the number of disturbances near the equinox than the solstices. And if we can consider much larger disturbances, we find an even greater concentration near the equinoxes. So that's quite an interesting phenomenon there. And it has a lot to do with the fact that the direction and the strength of Earth's magnetic field is observed to be varying during the equinoxes. Whilst this change is small, you can clearly see it displayed on the graph. So you're likely to have a much larger effect from a much smaller disturbance. We did have a large disturbance in the magnetic field here, which kicked off the storm, and then some other pretty abrupt perturbations, which allowed it to continue. But the kickoff of the storm was here and the change in the phi angle and the BZ, a big jump in density, but nothing at overall happening with the plasma speed. It continued to drop throughout the storm, which is very unique and not really indicative of a storm that would really affect planet Earth in any negative way except for aurora, meaning not a lot of charged plasma will be coming into the Earth unless this shoots up much higher. But that doesn't mean we need to not get ready for more blackouts because they're coming. And it doesn't have to do necessarily with the sun. In fact, it doesn't. It has to do with policy and the fact that they're switching over to unreliable energy and moving away from oil and gas, which we need. So, take heed. There may be blackouts, and it will be on purpose. Now, did you hear about the treasure map that guided scientists to a massive meteorite? This meteorite is larger than 99% of all meteorites discovered in Antarctica, and it is fantastic. Now, what they did was they created a map where the likelihood of finding these meteorites would be very high, and then they went out there and they searched the red zones. 
where the probability to find meteorites was above 90%. And that's just what they did. They found one of the largest meteorites ever. And it's pretty cool. Take a look at how stoked they were. And that is the meteorite they found right there. What do you think that little rock weighs? Well, it's an astonishing 16.7 pounds. And only about 100 meteorites that size or larger have been ever recovered in Antarctica. So a pretty rare find. And I'm sure they're going to chop that up in a million bits. Now, in case you were wondering, a nuclear physicist described seven things you probably didn't know about radioactive fallout from a nuclear bomb. Number one, fallout can stay in the atmosphere for years. Number two, radioactive fallout is at the bottom of every ocean. Number three, most Americans carry traces of radioactivity inside of them. Number four, food is a common culprit in radioactive fallout exposure. Number five, and preppers know this, Potassium iodide may help protect you from thyroid cancer caused by fallout, and it's available over the counter, even in our store. Number six, fallout from a bomb is less dangerous than a nuclear power plant meltdown. And number seven, only about 15% of the energy released by a nuclear bomb comes from nuclear radiation. The rest is from the boom. <laughs> Now, this animal was declared extinct in India in 1952, but amazingly, the cheetah has returned. I thought we were in the next mass extinction. More amazing phenomenon, a wolverine has been seen outside of its normal range for the first time in 30 years. Hmm. I thought they were dying off. But the good news is that beetles suck water into their butts to stay hydrated. And now scientists know how. And I, well, I don't want to know. But if you do, the link will be below. As fear-mongering hits the media once again, NASA is tracking a huge growing anomaly in Earth's magnetic field. The only problem is we discovered the South Atlantic anomaly in 1958, and it hasn't really changed much. Only grown slightly larger. So, that's not news. <laughs> what is news is the new work by Svensmark. Did supernovas help push life to become more diverse? This would corroborate the work of Robert Felix, God rest his soul, and the work of Leah and I on our channel, where we are pinpointing the fact that geomagnetic excursions cause increase in cosmic radiations, mass extinction, and speciation on Earth. And here's the paper from Henrik Svensmark, published the 16th of March of this month, A Persistent Influence of Supernova on Biodiversity Over the Phanerozoic. Now, he's looking at much larger time scales, and his conclusions are based on larger mass extinction events. But you don't have to look this broad. You can get down to a much smaller scale, and that's what Leah and I have been doing over at our radio show on revolution.radio every Saturday noon mountain time. So check it out. Now, one other tidbit I want to share with you guys is a lot of the time I've been talking about wood gasifiers, people don't know what they are. So here is the main document coming from FEMA plans, the construction of a simplified wood gas generator for fueling internal combustion engines during the end of the empire. And it is a 66-page PDF to get you up to speed on how to run your tractor on burning wood. You're welcome. If you have any other questions, join us over on our new platform, 5.me backslash diamond, where you can ask Diamond anything. Just click on the link and ask me. You can sign up for premium. You can get see answers to all of the questions that have been asked. You can book free paid one-on-ones on Zoom with me for 30 minutes or an hour. You can buy a $20 five-minute chat. The possibilities are endless. Just make sure you join the community for free. And that's a boom to knowledge. Make sure you put it on your calendars, April 1st and 2nd. Leah and I will be in the San Luis Valley at the San Luis Valley Seed Exchange. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Become a Patreon. Support the work we do. 
Sign up as a member over at 5.me backslash diamond and be safe. We love you. Share this video.